Hey guys, Tim with Defense Mechanisms. Uh, I want to take a couple minutes today and talk to you guys about barrel length for our CQB rifles. Uh, this conversation kind of swirls around the dark, dusty corners of the internet from time to time. Um, you know, with people out there suggesting that you should clear rooms with, uh, you know, 7.5 PDW size guns where, you know, other guys were, you know, they were in the Marines back in the day and they were clearing with 20 inch guns and if it was good enough for them, it's good enough for you, right? Um, so I just want to get into that a little bit, talk about the pros and cons of each and uh, kind of why we do what we do. Um, I'll tell you that our philosophy is very much uh, driven from Joe Wire out of Alliance Police Training. He is absolutely our mentor for all this stuff and the guy that we uh, train under and train with all the time. So let's first, let's talk about kind of your shorter category of fighting rifle. And I'm, I'm gonna ignore the PDW category. I'm gonna ignore, you know, the 5.5, 7.5, these tiny little guns. Um, if, if your use case requires a tiny little PDW, uh, then none of these, none of the other things we're gonna talk about matter, right? Um, if you can only use a PDW because of space constraints or concealability reasons, then, then you know that and, and nothing that I'm gonna say matters, that's what you need. Um, but realistically, for most of us, especially for training, we don't need to use tiny little PDWs. Um, so when I talk about short guns, I'm going to talk about the 10.5 to 12.5 type category, right? And there's definitely uh, some good and some bad with uh, the 10.5 and the 12.5 type category. Um, the, the first thing to talk about is right now I'm showing this rifle suppressed, and that is definitely one of the pros uh, of running the shorter gun, is that you can run it suppressed at the same overall length um, as, as an unsuppressed 16 inch, right? And I'll show that in a minute. Right now all these are suppressed, but uh, in a minute I'll show you how my unsuppressed 16 inch is the exact same length as my suppressed 11.5 um, and my suppressed 12, because I've got an extended muzzle device on here. But um, so that is definitely a pro of a short gun, is you can run it with a suppressor. Uh, suppressors, especially for CQB, are really nice. Uh, they reduce the concussive force that your teammates experience, they reduce the flash uh, from your muzzle, and they certainly uh, reduce the directionality of the, of the, the crack of the shot. It makes it a little, little harder to know exactly where it's coming from. But you know, don't think for a minute, a 5.56, 11.5, 10.5, 5.56 with a suppressor on is gonna be hearing safe. It's not, it's not gonna be hearing safe, but it's gonna be more better-er. Uh, so now, for the rest of this conversation, I'm going to pull this suppressor off because I think, um, you know, su suppressors are not something everybody has. And uh, a lot of the cons to the shorter weapon are exacerbated without the suppressor. But before I move on to cons, the last, the last pro of a shorter 10 to 12, you know, 10 inch to 12 inch type rifle is maneuverability. Uh, for sure, a shorter weapon uh, allows me to maneuver it easier. Uh, if I'm working in a doorway, it's easier for me to keep the weapon out of the threshold so I'm not breaking that threshold. Uh, so I'm not showing the people in the room that I'm there, right? A shorter, a shorter rifle is easier to do that. With a longer rifle, I have to do some other tricks we'll talk about. Um, so the pros, I can suppress it and keep it, you know, about the same as a 16 and it's more maneuverable. Um, the cons, however, is a relatively long list. Uh, the worst and most notable con of an unsuppressed 10.5 to 12.5 is concussion. Um, when I'm working close around people and I'm sending rounds with this thing, it's shaking their teeth, rattling their bones, right? It's intense, it's loud, it's aggressive. Uh, concussion can be disorienting even to me and my own teammates and working around guys with really short guns with big brakes on them uh, is painful and unpleasant in every, in every way, right? So for sure, a big con of short guns is concussion. Um, another con of short guns is muzzle management around partners. When we both have long 16 inch rifles and we're standing on line with each other, if I'm slightly offline from my partner, um, our muzzles are both long, our rifles are long and they're far enough out and they're, you know, they're not, um, you know, I'm not able to muzzle my partner by be, just being a little bit offline. Uh, but if my rifle is short and his is long, it becomes very easy for me to put him in danger, to muzzle his hand, the end of his barrel, if, uh, if I'm not perfectly online. Now, being perfectly online is always the goal, um, but slight discrepancies are gonna be part of life, right? And so if we're both using longer rifles, it reduces the liability, um, you know, of, of being offline with each other, muzzling each other. 
Another con for short rifles is space for accessories. And that's, that's shown really great on this rifle. Um, I, with a, with a laser mounted at 12 o'clock, I feel cramped on an 11.5. Uh, my arm's way back here. It's way less comfortable than I want. I really want to be out here. I feel much more comfortable with my hand at the end of the rail on an 11 inch rail. And so for sure, there's limited space on shorter rifles to mount all of your lights and lasers. And you'll see that my lights and lasers are mounted far forward, getting them as far to the end of the rail as possible to maximize the space. My laser hangs off, my lights pushed out in front. Um, with longer guns, that's not as important. So with that same kind of uh, limited space also comes uh, ergonomic problems, right? Like I just said, I really would rather have my hand up front, uh, out far, but it's not comfortable, it's not available, the space isn't there. And so I come into ergonomic challenges with short rifle. Um, my, my shoulder's more chicken winged, everything's more compressed. Uh, can you train and work through it? Yes, of course you can, of course you can. Um, but for sure, it's not ideal. And the shorter your gun, the more that problem is gonna be there. Um, and on, on top of all those cons, ballistics, right? We know for sure that we get more velocity out of a longer barrel. And with these little 5.56 bullets, um, velocity is what does the work, right? And so we are giving up and sacrificing substantial uh, ballistic by running, running ourselves down to a shorter gun. So as we jump to the 16 inch rifle, and you'll see that my 16 and my 13 nine that I'm gonna talk about aren't fully set up. Um, I've mentioned in a couple videos that I need to put more work in with SPR and GPR type rifles, that most of my work is CQB. And so you'll see these rifles aren't fully set up. I'm, I'm getting there, hopefully this year, I'm gonna spend more time uh, working on the GPR and even some SPR stuff. Um, but if we jump backwards and uh, compare to what we did with the 10.5 kind of range. So when I'm talking about a 16 inch gun, I don't just mean a 16 inch barrel. I mean anything from like a 13.9 pin and welded up to like an 18 inch, right? We're, we're talking about a range, just like 10.5 to 12.5. We're talking, you know, four, 14 to 18 inches, this kind of range. Um, and so the first con is if you're gonna suppress a longer 16 inch gun, uh, or even or even a 13.9. If you're going to suppress this, it's going to definitely take up a lot more space. It's longer, right? The 16-inch gun being about four inches, five inches longer, depending on which suppressor you use. And so very quickly, suppressing this starts to uh, really give me maneuverability issues as, as I try to work in close quarters. And so a lot of guys I know that run 16-inch guns for CQB run them unsuppressed. Uh, and as you can see, like I said before, my 11.5 suppressed and my 16 inch unsuppressed are nearly identical in overall length. And so that gives me uh, the exact same maneuverability with this 16 incher that I have with this 11.5 with the downside of it not being suppressed. So uh, you then have to decide if you want suppression or ergonomics, right? We'll talk about the, the pros and cons continue. Um, so one con of a 16, if you add a can, it gets really long. Uh, the other con, of a 16, especially with a can, uh, is that maneuverability issue, right? As we're trying to work in tighter environments, uh, this can be problematic. Now, again, I just showed you how this is unsuppressed, exactly the same size as, as the short gun suppressed. So, you know, if you're running this unsuppressed, the maneuverability doesn't have to be a con, it's the same. If you're running it suppressed, it starts to be problematic. Now, if we start to look at the pros, um, the, the biggest pro of a 16 inch over a 10.5, 11.5 is ballistics, right? A lot more velocity. Um, the bullets are moving a lot faster. They are going to do their job better uh, when they come in contact with your target, your, your adversary, right? And so for sure, it's a big advantage to have the longer barrel ballistically. Uh, ergonomics, we've, we talked about how compressed uh, how compressed you have to be behind the short rifle, whereas with a 16-inch gun, with a 15-inch rail here, I have all the space I could ever want in the world, wherever I want my hand, even if I have accessories up front. Uh, like, you, like I said, this is only partially complete. I haven't mounted my laser yet. But it, even with accessories up front, I can be behind those accessories and still have a lot of room. So there's an ergonomic advantage to the longer gun. The same deal with accessory space, right? The ergonomics and accessory space kind of go hand in hand. If I don't have room to put my stuff, then my ergonomics are compromised. If I have great ergonomics, it's because my stuff is put somewhere where it's out of the way. Uh, the other issue that the 16-inch does a lot better, again, unsuppressed versus unsuppressed, is it's a lot harder for me to muzzle my partner when we're both using these long guns. If, uh, you know, if we're both shoulder to shoulder and on target, and I take a half step forward in the middle of a fight, I, it's harder for me to get in front of my partner, it's harder for him to hurt me, and it's less likely that I'm gonna be injured. Really important, right? Not shooting your partners is important. 
Uh, Gunfighting only works if, if we're all fighting the bad guy, not fighting each other, right? Um, and then obviously a 16 inch gun is a lot less concussive, unsuppressed, than a 10.5, 11.5. And this is a big advantage if, you, uh, if you're working with a team of guys and you are all unsuppressed, um, you will all be much happier if you're running longer rifles. Um, the, you know, the concussion, the rattling forces, uh, just the disorienting, all that is greatly reduced uh, running longer guns. So kind of with that said, um, you know, I, I try to typically try to show you guys like what I think is good, what I think is bad, what I think is kind of in the middle. And what we're seeing a lot of guys do these days is kind of going to this middle ground, uh, this 13.7 type rifle where, yeah, it's legally 16 inches long, but you can see here, uh, if I suppress my 16 again, you know, I, I save myself two to three inches depending on which suppressor we're using, which muzzle device, these types of things, right? So we can see like a 13.7 is a couple inches um, looks like about three inches shorter than a 16. Um, and it's only, you know, it's only two and a half, three inches longer uh, than an 11.5. And so it, it starts to become a really good middle of the road option, uh, especially for bigger dudes. Bigger dudes are gonna really benefit from the ergonomic advantage of the longer rail. This is a 13.5 rail versus 11. Um, and, and obviously if I was running a 10.5, this rail would be a 9.5 or 10 inch rail and that would be even worse, even harder to deal with. And so the ergonomic advantages of a 13.7, 13.9 uh, start to become really nice. Obviously you have uh, ballistic advantage by being a longer barrel, higher velocity. Um, you know, wh whether you run that as a GPR with a magnified optic or you still use a red dot, totally your call. Um, but there's a lot of advantages to running, uh, you know, more of a, you know, 12.5 to 13.5, 13.9 type rifle, a little longer, uh, especially if you're big. If you're not big, if you're not a big dude, then the 11.5 can be totally fine for you, but we would, with the one caveat that you've got to run it suppressed. Um, if you run this suppressed, it's going to have uh, most of the advantages of a 16 inch, right? It doesn't give you any ballistic advantage running it uh, suppressed. You, you, you don't get the accessory. So really all it does is it solves the online problem, right? What it, what it does is you're still limited with your accessory space, you're still limited with your ergonomics and your ballistics, but by running a can on here, it gives you the same overall length as a 16 inch unsuppressed which really mitigates the issues of being offline with your partner. Um, there's certainly some tips and tricks that we, you can use. Uh, we do a lot of short stocking. If we're working a doorway and we're compressed on that doorway, there's not room for us to stand back to not push our muzzle and we're compressed. We'll run the stock over our shoulder. Um, I talked a lot about running a laser. This is another great time to have a laser. If the stock's over my shoulder, I can work off the laser and still make shots and hits from here. Hopefully, this gives you guys something to think about. Um, I, know, I know that barrel length and conversations are uh, a buzz all over the internet all the time. And I think if, uh, you know, for me, I choose to run a shorter gun, but I run it suppressed so that I can mitigate the issues uh, related to muzzle management and with my partner. Um, for sure, I am feeling now with my mall, this wasn't really problematic because I didn't, it didn't lose the rail space in the front. But now running this Engal clone, um, I am starting to feel it and there is, there is a good chance that I will start moving over to this 13.9 just to, for the ergonomic advantages. You know, the maneuverability difference of two and a half, three inches is, is not going to be that big a deal. And I think that the ergonomic advantages might be, might be there for me. And so it's something I'm thinking about as you move forward or at least setting up this GPR with the, with the lights and lasers that I need to start working in CQB and, and playing with that, even with a magnified optic. But I hope this gives you guys something to think about. Um, maybe a different perspective or lens than you had looked at barrel length before. Um, if you guys have any questions about barrel length, rifle setup, we've been doing a lot of rifle videos lately, obviously hit us up, contact at defensemechanisms.com. Uh, we'd love it if you like, subscribe, share, follow, message us, all that stuff on our social channels. Uh, really, we love hearing from you guys, it really benefits us. And if you guys have ideas for products, don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, a lot of our best product ideas have come from, from guys out there in the field doing stuff that ask for help. So um, we'd love to hear from you, love to talk to you. Hopefully this video helped you guys out, give you something to think about, and I'm sure I'll see you on the next one.